Hello crazy fam, welcome back to another video. I was thirsty, so I started off with an energy drink. And energy drinks remind me of the topic of this video in a way, because they say energy drinks are kind of damaging to your body, so it's a perfect time to talk about all of the fashion trends that you probably participated, depending on your age, it will kind of depend on how many you probably participated in, but oh goodness. Every single one that I'm gonna talk about, I definitely participated in, oh well, actually, Okay, one of them I kind of sort of participated in, but not really, and all the other ones I definitely did, and I want to start off with one of the most nostalgic one for me ever, just because, like, I really participated in it, and that is silly bands, and so when I talk about all these different fashion trends and how they are damaging, it's in different severity levels. Some are more damaging than others, but I think it's a good, like, throwback memory type video, and it's gonna talk about how we didn't really think about all the damages that it could cause us at the time, especially since most of these we participated in as kids. And you know, we were worried about other things, aka, you know, what we're gonna have for lunch. Um, but no, in all reality, silly bands definitely were a huge trend. I couldn't believe how much they blew up. I kind of wonder how much money, like, the main brand made and then all of the, like, knockoff brands that came afterwards, because there was plenty of knockoff of the main brand which I think was actually called Silly Bands and that's how it started and literally it was wearing like condom material on our wrists like all the way up our arms <laughs> and oh gosh I don't know if you participated in that trend or if you're super young and never heard about it but I feel like even if you are younger you heard about it and if you're older and didn't participate in yourself maybe you bought it for your kids and you know about it and it basically they were little bands that went around your wrist almost like those like elastic hair ties type things but they're made out of like a condom like material and they look all funny around your wrist because when you took them off they made shapes so it would be like a shape of like a dinosaur or a unicorn corner whatever it is and then you pull it and put it on your wrist and they look so funny because all those shapes add weird like texture elements but people would collect them and they would wear more and more and more and more of them and especially as you went up your arm they got tighter and tighter and some of those like off-brand type ones were really tight around your wrist but you still wear them because you wanted to have this cool dinosaur on your wrist so you didn't care that it was cutting off your blood flow did you no, you didn't. And I had so, so many silly bands. I don't even think I own like one anymore. But I did learn that they weren't that great for you, which I kind of suspected because one, I felt the blood flow getting cut off. And also schools started like banning them. And it was partially because people were getting like really distracted, like trading them. Like, I'll take your dinosaur for this unicorn. And they're like, no, 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 I want two unicorns for my dinosaur. Like, you know, like random silly, like trading type of stuff. And I'm talking like this, but I don't think I was even that, that young when they came out. But um, here is the damaging side effects. So let's see. According to a Fox News article posted, oh, it was last updated in 2014, but it was published in 2010. Whoo! 20 years ago. 10 years ago! That is crazy! And it is Dr. Manny says, silly band bracelet trend may be dangerous for kids. It says the bracelets could cause blood clots to form in some of the veins, giving someone epileptitis. I can't say that word, I probably just totally butchered that, which is an inflammation and clotting of the vein. He said, Dr. Manny was especially concerned for kids who wear numerous silly bands for hours at a time or even fall asleep at night with them on. And I won't lie, I definitely wore numerous of them up my arm and for numerous hours, aka usually like all throughout the whole entire school day and afterwards, I was wearing arm, both arms full of silly bands. And I definitely don't think it was healthy and then you took them all off and you had like marks all the way up your arm, but they were so cool and fun, so we didn't care about that at all. And okay, I talked about silly bands enough the next one I want to talk about, which I was looking down at my notes for, was skinny jeans. So 
I definitely participated in that like goth trend of wearing the skinny jeans like as tight as humanly possible. And they weren't even like the stretchy type of jean material, not like yoga pants or anything like that that people wear skin tight all the time. No, I'm talking about skinny jeans that were mostly jean material yet they were so tight they looked like they were painted on my body and sometimes I couldn't really perfectly sit right in them. I don't know if anybody ever participated in that trend either. I had some really funky colored ones. I had like bright blue ones, like zippers on the front. I had a pair of like neon yellow ones. I had a pair that were like half red, half black, and then pairs that were like a different color in the front, different color in the back. Definitely went through that gothy, um, it's like another word besides goth, but it had like a lot of color, like gothy, emo-y type phase. There's another word I'm looking for. But yeah, I definitely participated in that. And in general, when it comes to tight clothing, there are some studies that say that it can cause like cellulite or different like skin damage type stuff because it doesn't get like the breathability and the, um, elasticity or whatever that it needs like basically your skin isn't free and breathable it's all confined tight and squished and not getting the air it needs and all the other stuff and they also say that it can cause some you know UTI not is it UTI or yeast I think it's yeast it's UTI or yeast infections that they say you can get from wearing you know like skinny jeans and stuff because again not having that breathability like it's all like confined and suffocating and there are definitely different studies that say it does or doesn't cause this stuff and it's very contradictory like a lot of things in life but I partially wonder if it's true because I have a crap ton of cellulite and I'm like, I wonder if I had to do with my skinny jean phase of wearing things that were way, way too tight for me. In general, that probably caused some kind of damage. Even if it wasn't cellulite or something else, it probably caused something. Because they were so gosh darn tight, there was no way that was healthy. Like, no way at all. And I wonder if, like, yoga pants are better for you, like, better for your body and your skin and stuff than skinny jeans are. Because it's not, like, a heavy material, so it's more breathable and flexible. And hopefully it's fine because I now live in yoga pants instead of jeans. Won't deny that. Also live in dresses, but you know, what can a dress really do? It's not tight, it's loose and flowy and lovely. And that is all I'm gonna say about skinny jeans because there's so many contradictory studies on it that I can't really put something in front of you and feel comfortable that it's factual or even close to factual. I just think that definitely whatever it is, there is something that skinny jeans do to our body that were not good. And if you participate in that trend, I really hope you threw away those jeans that were six sizes too small and you didn't keep them and wonder 10 years later, I don't fit in my jeans from high school. It's like, you didn't fit in them in high school either. And then you had like the muffin top thing on top because they're so gosh darn tight or you wore them even higher so it'd hide that. Either way, oh, it was bad. And I know this wasn't like a damaging trend, but low rise jeans. Who invented that? And who thought it was a good idea? No, no, I want to all tucked in. Okay, so I'm looking down on my list to see the next one I wanted to mention. Oh, so this is similar to the skinny jeans thing, and that's like corsets and shapewear. And it has the same similar contradictory statements on cellulite or damage to your organs and blood flow and blood clots and all this other bad things for you. And shapewear definitely isn't as bad as corsets, but they also say shapewear isn't really good for your skin. Gosh darn, it makes you look real good that way. But in no way am I imagining something squishing you to death is good for you and doesn't cause damage. But you know, everything causes a little bit of damage in life and we pick and choose what is worth it to us. And corsets, on the other hand, are definitely a lot more damaging. And those are more proven side effects of how it damages your internal organs, to your rib cages, to it shaping everything to the point where it can stop being able to support itself and it can cause all these other enormous, huge, bad, health problems when it comes to corsets, but I think it's definitely a pick and choose type of thing. I don't think people should hate on, you know, celebrities or influential people for wearing them on occasion once in a while as a fashion statement. Like, I know the historical 
significance of corsets. I know the many, many studies done all the health problems of it, but I think it's one of those things like what's wrong with wearing it on occasion from here time to time. It's not like wearing that corset is telling women that you have to be this skinny, perfect, intense body. Like it can also be looked at as a historical fashion statement. It's literally like a fashion piece that has been worn throughout history. Yes, not always for the right reasons, but it still has like I don't know, it has a fashion oomph to it. It has that thing that it kind of just like brings you back to a different time period and it's a different style and it, I don't know, I'm just one of those people, I definitely think there's nothing wrong with wearing a corset on occasion as a fashion statement, not trying to say that this is how you're supposed to look or wearing one every day or having this expected reality that you're supposed to look that way. It's like, no, 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 it's a fashion statement that you wear at an event, not something you wear every day to work or out to the mall or something. It's like, no, 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 a statement piece. And I think it's okay to wear something that might be a little bit damaging to your body as a statement piece because you're not wearing it on a regular basis. You're probably not gonna get as much of that long-term side effects, though I, again, I don't know all the medical stuff behind it, but I definitely, I'm a corset fan and I love them. Okay. Okay, next one is the one that I didn't really fully participate in, but slightly participate in, and that's hair like styles that were not so great for you. And those big, poofy, what is it, 80s? Is it 80s hair? I'm not really sure because I was born in 1998. I'm about to be 22. Like literally this week that I'm posting this video or I'm posting it after my birthday. I'm not sure, it's on the 24th, we shall see. But point is, I'm only about to be 22, so I didn't participate in that big hair trend. It's not like there's like huge crazy bad side effects and I'm not talking about like side effects to your actual hair and how damaging that much hairspray and other products and teasing it does to your hair because that's another story in itself but we're talking about the health side effects to your body not like things hanging off your body and one of the biggest ones I would just say is the headaches that would come from it people get like headaches and migraines from teasing their hair and having it big and heavy and like away from them but that's not just for the hair in the 1970s. I looked it up, 1970s big hair styles. It doesn't just happen with that. It also happens with wearing your hair in tight ponytails for too long. And I'm definitely a victim of that. And I know for a fact that it gives me headaches and kind of gives me that like weird drogy, I don't know how to describe it. Like it, oh, it's like a pulling like head feeling. It's like you feel out of it type of, it's hard to describe unless you've experienced it, but I definitely know that's true. And I don't know if there's any like long, long-term side effects to it or if anybody's ever studied it, but I definitely know the short-term side effects of that, like big hair or the tied back, slick, tight hair is the headaches that come with it. And then one of the other things that I never knew is that there's actually such thing as like hairspray poisoning. Like I get if you ingest anything that's a chemical in extreme forms, you're obviously gonna get a poisoning from it. Like, but hairspray poisoning is like a thing that's happened to people before. And I'm guessing a lot more during that time period because to perform those big, huge hairstyles, you had a lot of product in there. And when you spray like a ton of hairspray around you and you're breathing that all in, in no way could that be good for you. Especially since like I'm looking at this thing right now and they say hairspray came into vogue after World War III when the cosmetic industry adopted the use of aerosol spray technology developed by the Department of Agriculture for the use of insect sprays during the war. War. So basically you were spraying your hair with insect spray to keep it all poofy and big. I kind of wonder how much of that type of product is in our hairspray now, but that's kind of creepy. Um, this transfer or technology to the business of beauty help women's hairstyles such as the beehive and the Buffon possible. I don't know what those are, but if anybody grew up in that time period, maybe you know what that means. I'm guessing it's something from like the 1970s time frame. Um, although the use of hairspray has declined it with the popularity of more natural hairstyles, um, hairspray is commonly used by men and women today. Really? I didn't know. But that is something from poison.org. <laughs> 
I think it's because I was looking up like the side effects of the like, hairspray and stuff. That's why poison.org came up, but it was just kind of funny seeing that. And it's so creepy to think that they were spraying insect spray on their hair. But I guess there's a lot of things we don't realize that are multiple purpose. And when you hear that you're using bug spray on your hair, well, insect spray on your hair, it's weird to think about, but if it was just made for that originally, it would do its use and you wouldn't think it's weird. Just like the, like the Silly Band, it's basically made out of like condom material. And it's like, that's weird to think about that basically kids are wearing a bunch of condoms all the way down their wrists. Well, not literally, but the band part of it is like the same material. But it's just a stretchy plastic that, you know, is able to stretch and form a shape and all that type of stuff. So it's not like it's literally a condom. It's just a similar material, just like the spray. It's just a similar comical compound as the stuff for instance. So multi-purpose, but weird to think about in that way. And the next thing on my list right here, ooh oversized stuff past hair so not just like hair where it's like oversized and stuff but doing oversized bags or oversized earrings they all have different health side effects and there is definitely a trend where people would wear those like huge handbags i know i was a kid and i had like my huge big purse you're basically carrying like a backpack on your wrist or your elbow or your shoulder and it's just not healthy for your back it's not healthy for your arms like it's all around bad to do anything extreme oversized and nowadays it's become more of a trend it's coming coming out a little bit like out of style a little bit but those little tiny tiny purses that people wear on their shoulder which i'm not like the biggest fan of that style but hey that's a lot better for your back and body than wearing a giant purse that you can barely hold up like that's definitely was not a good trend but the little bag is kind of ugly i don't mind like the ones that are like shoulder bags the strap but I hate the little bags, the short strap, and it's like a little tiny thing right here. I'm like, that's uncomfortable. But hey, it's better for us. And then oversized earrings, come on, we all know this one. When there was a trend to wear like those big, huge, like designy pieces. I'm not talking about like the big hoops, but like the big like fake jewel type things that were all facing the same direction. And they're so bad because they drag down your ear and they actually cause like permanent damage that if you don't take them out and let them grow back, it will never grow back. Just like doing, um, what you gonna call it? Gauges. Also, is that a trend? Keep in mind some of these ones I say are trends are not really trends, like the literal definition of a trend, but definitely. Gah, the cartilage, not cartilage, the, um, the gauges, it's like once you go to a certain size, you can't go back. And just like the hanging earrings, once they hang so low, they're not going back, honey, they're not. And I think people definitely don't wear is like crazy intense design pattern jewelry things on their ears anymore. But we still wear big hoops. It's just we've gotten materials that are lighter now, so it makes it a little bit easier to do it, which is definitely, definitely good. Because we don't want to be ripping out our earlobes and earlobes is an earlobe. Is that what it's called? I think it's called earlobe. That's the other thing. Is sometimes people, it's not just that they were getting big and saggy. And some people would actually it would rip through their ear. And ooh, and you got to get it stitched back together. No, thank you. I don't want to think about that. Let's move on to the next one. So I would say ill-fitting bras or bras in general. So I am going to be doing a video coming up soon, which is a year bra free. I have not worn a literal bra in over a year because I felt like for me, it just wasn't worth it, the side effects of it. And I feel a lot more comfortable in my body now that I don't. I still wear like sports bras once in a while, or sometimes I'll wear like a bra lad or something, but I don't wear like bra bras anymore or on a daily, like I know I used to wear bras every single day. And we'll go to the first side of it, which is like ill-fitting bras. This is really a trend anymore. Yeah, I would say it's a trend just because people used to wear those like really big bras and they would like stuff them full of like paper to like, you know, bring the girls up or whatever. Or the trend of once that was kind of over and we had the technology to build it without having to have the paper stuffed into it, they just made the bra with it already in it. Then that's also ill-fitting because a lot of times they're really tight and they push up and that's not always good for your body, like for your boobs, they're not able to support themselves the same way when you're shoving them up to Timbuktu. 
and they're really tight. It's just, it's not good for the skin. It's not good for the elasticity. It's not good for them being able to support themselves and blood flow and all this other stuff. So if you're going to wear a bra and you're okay with the side effects that still come with just wearing a bra in general, then at least wear one that is not ill-fitting because there's so many side effects beyond what I'm even going to talk about now. There's so many different studies on it. Just wear one that fits you. Get fitted at the store. Look it up online. Figure out what works for your body. It's like shape and how you're fitted. Because some people it's like, you got more under boob, you got more over boob, you got more side boob, all this other stuff. Like every boob is a little bit different. So find the bra type that works for you so it's not an ill-fitting bra. And then also find the right size so you're not wearing an ill-fitting bra that causes damage because that has been a trend for long enough of the girls that used to wear those big oversized bras and stuff them full paper or later on where it was the girls wearing the bras way too tight with an intense amount of padding. Go to save that for date night or not at all but I'm a little biased because I don't wear a bra and I'll talk about the side effects more in detail about wearing ill-fitting bras and wearing bras in general when I do that upcoming video of me not wearing bras and accepting that my nipples are gonna be out and other people have to accept it too. And so the next one because I already talked about the heavy jewelry because I kind of combined that with bags and stuff is going to be ooh. Ooh, the ones that are most personal to me, and I've accepted, I've accepted my fate. I've just accepted that I'm gonna have the side effects of these because I love them, and I'm not giving them up, and sometimes in life, you gotta take the bad things. You gotta eat the ice cream and chips, even though it might not be that great for you, and that is thongs and high heels. So I am a sucker for high heels. I wear thongs almost every single day. They're the only thing I really wear for underwear for the most part. And I'll take the side effects that come with them. I'm definitely a shoe hoe for sure. I have a previous video that I actually did a haul of every single pair of shoes I own. And I still feel like I don't have enough, yet I have a lot, yet I don't have a lot. It's really a battle. But point is, high heels and different types of shoes that aren't supportive and conform your feet in different weird ways are definitely not that great for your feet. And I've had so many people, especially when I was in high school, wearing my stilettos, which that's all another story that's in that video. I used to get teachers comment on it all the time and be like, that's so bad for your feet. When you get older, you're never going to wear heels. You're going to hate it. You're going to see all the bad side effects, all this other stuff. And I was like, fudge that. I'm going to wear my stilettos because I like them. And it's my choice to destroy my feet and my back. <laughs> but yes, wearing high heels, especially the time where it was way more popular to wear like stilettos. Stilettos are not that good for us. That angle is, nope, not good for our feet. It can cause permanent damage to how our feet grow or how our feet age. It's just, it's bad and it can cause back problems because the way we're standing. <laughs> I do that partially because I've seen so many people try to walk in heels that most definitely can't and I was like younger and I could walk in them. I was just born to be in heels, okay? But no offense to anybody that can't walk in heels, like just work on it, you know? practice you got this but the other trend which I don't see as much it's like definitely not as popular at all anymore is a pointed toe shoes which I definitely I can't do the pointed toe heels really especially if they don't have a strap because my foot just comes out and flops and it's just so uncomfortable to me but I can slightly do them if they have a strap but those are also so bad for your feet because your toes should not be all pushed together like that. That's so bad, especially for your little pinky and your big toe. They're not a fan of that at all. Like, ooh, that hurts. And actually, in some cultures, they actually do purposely, like, form feet to be smaller. They keep giving them smaller and smaller, smaller shoes. And it's like a cultural thing. And it's so, so, so bad for their feet. And I know this isn't to that extreme, but definitely shoving your foot into the wrong shoe shape is like wearing the wrong size shoe. It's going to cause so many different problems, especially the longer you're wearing it, the more often you do it. It's, it's not good for you. So, you know, pick your battles here, folks. Only pick so many things from this list of trends to do on a regular basis, okay? And then when it comes to thongs, it is similar to kind of that skinny jean type mentality on the mixed divide on if it's bad or good for you. And that's because it really doesn't have that breathability. And 
and a lot of times it's not made out of the right materials. They say you should be wearing like 100% cotton on that little special area because it wants that breathability. It wants to have nothing like pressed up against it and tight because it wants to be free. It wants to breathe. And the thongs don't really allow that breathability. They're tight. They're usually the wrong material. Way too much spandex in them. But I love them. I love no panty lines. I actually find thongs comfortable, so I do it anyway, even though, you know, it might not be that great for the Gucci, but we all pick our battles when it comes to that. And that is all the trends, or I say trends, but technically that's not the right term, but fashion statements that weren't so great for your body. If you have any more, feel free to comment them down below or message me on Instagram at crazyfamilyfirst or Tori Zianka. I definitely want to hear them. I want that nostalgia. I want to know, especially if it's something I'm, maybe I'm still doing right now. Like maybe it's a trend going on right now that's not so great for your body. I want to hear about it and I want to do another video on this, like a part two on other damaging fashion trend statement things that weren't great for our bodies because there's definitely so many though some of the ones coming in now were actually better for us i think those big chunky shoes are ugly as heck but they got that good sole that support but they're also really heavy so i wonder if that's bad for us either way i want to do a part two down the road so message me or comment down below and I will see you in approximately one day with a new video because I post almost every other day during quarantine. I do a bunch of videos on helping you figure out adulting and vlogs along the way to entertain you. So I hope you have a great rest of your morning, evening, night, whatever it is for you, crazy fam. Please hit that like and subscribe button down below before you leave. And I will see you soon.